Now let me try to explore some properties of a data set, some additional properties that might be available in a data set because these are the two file stages that we will be using most frequently in all practical scenarios. In fact, these are the only two stages that we will be used for most 90% of our practical development work. So now I have defined this data set as a source link. Let me double click on this data set. The source, the file name needs to be defined that we already know. The options, are there any more available properties to add? No, there are none. There is just a missing columns mode, but which is by default a mandatory property. By default, the values ignore. We have some other options as well. So this simply means that if we have defined more columns on this columns tab here, but the actual data set is having lesser columns, what to do with those additional columns? So you can either specify the job to fail those, fail when it encounters extra columns or you can allow it to default the extra columns to some default values or you can explicitly say default only the non-nullable columns or default the nullable columns so when it defaults it will look at the data type of those columns if it is a wildcard column it will give an empty string if it's an integer column it will default it to zero and so on so this mode simply means that when you have additional columns defined on this link which do not exist in your data set then you have to you can handle it using that link so this is the only additional property that is available here you can also see that there's a property called runtime column propagation. Now, what does runtime column propagation do? As we saw for a sequential file stage, this is a very important property because when you define a schema file, then you have to use this property of runtime column propagation. So when you use the property of runtime column propagation, you do not need to define the columns here. But all the columns which are defined in your schema file or if you're using any other stage in your source will be propagated to your network next stage so we have to be careful while we use it for the other stages for a sequential file this needs to be enabled only when we are reading from a schema file for the other stages if we have enabled this and we actually wanted to drop some column and not propagate it further in the job but this option is checked then it will data search by default will propagate that column so we have to be very careful when we want to use this okay so we can just say cancel and we can come out of this. Now, another thing that you have to remember for a data set is that a data set can not, what is a data set? How is it different from a sequential file? We have seen that a data set is in a data stage native format. So a data stage native format, it is not ex uh, readable by external applications. So how it is stored in the backend is that a data set is stored as a descriptor file and a set of data files. A descriptor file points to these data files. So you cannot use a general Unix RM command to delete a data set. To delete a data set, you have to use special data sage commands, which is the orc admin command. So you have to use an orc admin delete and give the data set path. Now this orc admin command you have to execute after entering the info, information server folder on your Unix server. There only you can execute it. The other way to delete a data set is through your data set management utility. So they, if you go to the tools tab, you'll see that there's an option for data set management available. So when you click on this, it will allow you to select the data set that you want to remove and you can just click on a cross button. That's, that means delete and delete that data set. So these are some of the additional properties that we needed to understand for the sequential file and the data set stages. These are the most important stages in the file stages and we have already seen almost all the properties which are applicable to them. These are the ones which we will be using most frequently. Sequential file for reading from external applications, data set when we want to store intermediate data in the data stage native format. So in our other sessions, now we'll start looking at the other stages one by one and start seeing how they do their processing. So we'll be looking at all those stages in the later sessions. For now, this is the end of this session. Thank you for watching.